It's fed by greed, people who want to make quick profit without any fundamental or basis that exists. And usually the bubble is burst, زي the لونة اللي الواحد يحط فيها دبوس فرقع And usually the دبوس ده is fear الناس بتخاف So always the bubble is burst by fear Let me give you a quick history Mozambo we wouldn't remember it or know anything about it but some of us have witnessed some of its effects Great Depression of 1929 to 1939 approximately. It lasted approximately until World War II. That was the biggest failure of economic systems that we know of in our history at least. Stock prices, usually that's what happens when you have economic failure. Stock prices fall. And they dropped about 20% in very short period of time in 1929. And the biggest problem usually is when banks start for, uh, failing. Uh, the hustle in 11,000 out of 25,000 banks in the United States failed. went bankrupt. And there is nothing that makes people fearful as much as when they lose their money because the bank failed. And you can see in here, this is a picture of people standing in front of the bank looking for their money and the bank was closed and they could not get their money. And that's the worst type of psychological thing that can happen to me. There were several other crashes that took place actually in the last maybe century or so since the 1929. There was one in 1987 which was called Black Monday. Again, the Dow Jones plummeted around 500 points or about 23% of its value in one day. Why would make where you would start fail that much in one day? You look at the reasons for behind it and it's usually the greed and the corruption that exists in the system. Because of people like Michael Milken, and you can go and check him on the web, who was indicted in 98 counts of racketeering and securities fraud as a result of insider trading. The stock market was not pure, was not fair to a great extent. And it was Mr. Ivan Bosky who created irrational corporate takeovers, buying uh, corporations using junk bonds, which essentially is a very dangerous situation because when you buy corporations that you don't understand the technology of them and you don't know how to run them or manage them, usually the organizations will fail. And that created the crisis of 87. Crisis of 99, the fall of the tigers. You know the tigers of Asia, all of us talk about them. Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, South Korea, Thailand. All of a sudden, they were doing extremely well in the 80s and early 90s. And all of a sudden, the system collapsed. And it mostly collapsed again because of financial system uh, failure. And mostly because of corruption that existed in Indonesia and in Korea where people were getting loans that were not backed up by real production or real technological advances. And most of these would fail. Even though they did well in terms of their industry, in terms of their trade, but the financial system uh, fell apart. The Tigers rose because of an aggressive growth strategy. And on cheap labor, government favored rapid development, they had liberal investment strategies, and they concentrated on acquiring technology. They transferred technology from the US and from Japan and from different countries around the world. Why did they fail? They overextended themselves. The financial system controls were not there. 
the stock market crashed and certainly the currency lost its value. Actually, it lost almost 50% of its value in a very short period of time. And there was a real crisis in the Tigers of Asia. Crash of 2000, which is the dot-com bubble. Everyone probably heard about the dot-com bubble. And some people called it the crash of the technology companies. In fact, it was not the crash of the technology companies at all. Because the dot-com was not real technology. Everybody was creating a hype about a company that has a dot-com name. But no one owned the technology. Everybody was using the net as a mechanism to sell something or do something, some sort of activity. But no one owned the net. So there was no barrier to entry into this operation to a great extent. And the dot-com essentially failed because of the hype, mostly by investment bankers that went into IPO, initial public offerings, at demo stocks for the market. They were trying to sell stocks at a very high prices that were not justified based on the technology. If you don't base things well on the technology base, the chances are it's going to fail. It's overvaluation of unprofitable startups and to a great extent was a lack of understanding of the financial people of what value-added technology implied because that's where wealth is creation. Wealth is created. The creation of wealth is very well-known system. It really essentially depends on the know-how or the technology, if you will. That's the most important system in wealth creation, economic growth. Certainly labor, the people that are going to be working. The presence of capital, which is the capital market to a great extent. Some of the natural resources, but the natural resources are not everything. Actually, they are very limited in their impact. Certainly marketing, at a global uh, scale and now we have added the concept of sustainability of environmental policies and public policies that sustain the growth. Professor Solo of MIT who won the Nobel Prize showed in some of his studies that the growth in productivity which is the output per worker which is very much dependent on technology 80% of the growth that occurred in the United States over the last century and also in Europe was due to technical progress, not to anything else. It was the innovation, it was the technology that was developed that essentially created the boom and created the growth. There was also something else that's very important, which underlies the concept of competitiveness. Now what's the idea of the concept of competitiveness? The concept of competitiveness is that you have to invest in knowledge, invest in education, invest in know-how, essentially invest in technology and invest in factories for uh, production. On top of this comes improvement of productivity or efficiency and then you have to train and trade globally because if you have products that you are producing, you have to start selling it, selling it to the rest of the world. And when you do this correctly, you improve the standard of living. You improve the economic conditions of people within the country. The competitiveness depends on competitiveness of enterprises, of systems. Yani, shalikat, and muassasat, and masana that exist within a country. And the health of those organizations are dependent on the health of three very important systems that exist. One of them is the financial system and the economic system. The second one, which is the most important, is the technology development system. And the third one, which is the trade system, the what the government. All of these are judged to a great extent and are promoted by government policies. So the public policies and the government policies are very important in control of those systems. That's why I say when government controls fail, 